Hi everyone. Hi and thanks for joining us. If you just bear with me a second, I'm just getting the live stream set up. Right, so thank you for joining us for today's webinar, which is Money Management, How to Go It Alone as a Self-Employed or Home-Based Therapist. So if you give me a couple of seconds, I'm just making sure that we are live over on Facebook as well as here in Zoom, which I think we are. Excellent. So yeah, today I'm um, joined by Kerry Beavis. Um, and today's webinar, I'm Eve Oxbury, sorry, Head of Editorial at Professional Beauty, if you don't know me. So um, I'm joined by Kerry Beavis and Kerry is owner of home-based um, The Revive Co and founder of Membership Club, the Affluent Solo Therapist Club. So hi Kerry. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me again. I feel very privileged. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming back. <laughs> we didn't scare you off the first time. <laughs> You're more than welcome. I thoroughly enjoyed it and it's so nice when people get feedback and I can see that, you know, what I, what I say helps then um, more than happy to absolutely absolutely well we have fantastic feedback from your last webinar so thanks for coming back and yeah. um, we were just just while we have everyone we were just chatting today about the breaking news that um beauty salons and nail salons and spas are not on the list of the businesses that have been um, announced as allowed to open on 4th of July so um if you've not seen that news yet pop over to our website professionalbeauty.co.uk and it's a top story on there but yeah I think at the moment people need advice more than ever because we're still waiting for a very definite date in England for um salon reopening but a little bit more news uh, for Northern Ireland and Wales last week so there's a bit of detail on that over there too but yeah, I think while we're kind of waiting and preparing, <laughs> as much advice and, and information as we could get is very much appreciated. So thanks, Kerry. It's great to have you with us. So as I, I kind of mentioned just as we we're starting, um, Kerry's talk is going to be on how to go it alone as a self-employed or home-based therapist. So covering things, including the costs that you need to consider, and some of which might be surprising to you, um, how to price your treatments, and also advice on how to make the transition from being salon-based to being mobile or home-based. So Kerry, if you'd like to get started, that'd be fab. Fabulous, brilliant, thank you. Right, I've got a um, some pretty slides, so it's visual, so if you want to take any screenshots, you can, um, as well as we go along. So bear with me just while I find it. And I'm just gonna just while you're getting set up, I should say actually, if anyone's got any questions as we go along uh, for Kerry, if you're watching in Zoom, do paste your questions in the little Q&A box if you can see an icon at the bottom of your screen. If you're watching on our Facebook live stream, then just type your questions into the comments there and we'll get them answered as soon as possible. Fabulous. Right. So hopefully you can all see my... Um screen so hopefully you can so this afternoon what we're going to be talking about is money management as a mobile or home therapist um and obviously money is why we do what we do not one of the main reasons um and it's one of those things that we can often i've seen a lot of people feel guilty about making money um asking for money so we're going to deal a little bit about that as well so like eve said any questions please just ask them and i will answer them at the end oops there we go. So first of all, who am I? You might want to know a little bit more about me. Um, I am an owner of a successful home salon, The Revive Company. Um, I work from home um, in a, in, in a, essence, a bedroom upstairs in my house. Um, and I've had this business for, I want to say I started it in 2013. Um, and so it's, I'm from that. I won the Professional Beauty Therapist of the Year Award in 2016. Um, from the back of that, I've done some really random things like mind my occupation to Jack Whitehall on the BBC One show. He had to guess what I won the award with uh, for, and I shared the stage with Gravedigger of the Year and who else? And Gas Fitter of the Year. <laughs> we all had to mind what we did as a job. Um, I've been a beauty therapist for over 15 years, working from High Street, you know, as a, as a complete novice, not earning any money, just cleaning, finding the ropes, worked in salons, spas, gyms, and even being a college lecturer. Um, I am founder of the Affluent Solar Therapist Club, which is a monthly membership where I inspire, coach, um, along with other experts, other solo therapists, because I know what it's like when you start out and you just don't know where to start. You've done your training. You may have worked for a long time for other people, but when you go it alone, you kind of like, oh, there's a lot of hats to wear. So that is what I also help people do. Um, and me too, I've had numerous attempts to set up my own beauty businesses throughout the years. Throughout the 15 plus years, I've tried being a Nowtech, 
uh, but didn't that didn't work very well. I've tried to open little places in gyms, um, go mobile. I've tried them all throughout the years. Just I've never I don't see them as failures. I've just learned and gone maybe not that way and just keep tweaking to finally actually having a successful business. So it doesn't happen overnight and it is a journey. I'm um, also a Pilates instructor. Um, I'm also a business coach and success empowerment coach to solo therapists. I am a mum to, well, actually he's not three and a half, he's four next month. I just like to try and keep him little. Um, to Maddox, my little boy. And I'm also a, a crystal collector. Love them. They're, they're everywhere, literally. I've got them next to me on the floor. <laughs> so that's just a little bit about who I am. And that actually to hear what you are here. Now I'm going to talk about what you are here for. So the importance of money management. So you want to think, why have you started or maybe you intend to start your own therapy business? The number one reason I find with people is because we love to help people. And that's, you know, that's our passion. We've got a passion for whatever your expertise is. We, we just love what we do and we want to share that with other people to make them feel good. And if you're new to this, you may not have experienced that bit yet, but you know, when people leave you, how you've had such an impact on how they feel about themselves, about their body and how they go on to, you know, their, their day feeling so much better with what you've done. It's really, it's inspiring. It's wonderful to do. Um, you might also have wanted to start your business to do it your way. You've worked for other places. I mean, I can quite say like, I'm probably not the greatest employee for a salon because I've always thought I'm going to do this, learn what I can, and then I'm going to move on and do it bigger and better and learn from other people's mistakes because I want to do it my way I don't want to scrimp and save I didn't want to do it a particular way that other places did it I wanted to do it my way another bonus it should give you more freedom but I know for me as well we've all done it been you end up being a slave to your business um but the idea is you want to work for yourself to have more freedom and I think what I've seen a lot of therapists um think during this time of lockdown is to start to understand actually I don't want to work like how I was before maybe the hours that didn't suit you um, there's so many things that we've had to think about that's allowed us to think about during this time and number five we know that we can make more money for working for ourselves than working for somebody but over the years and when I did um, tutoring I've seen so many therapists that work for themselves not charge enough feel guilty about charging, um, asking for money, tallying up the bill and going, oh, gosh, that's way too much. They'll never pay that. And literally discounting money there on the spot. In the end, I've seen people offering so many discounts and added extra bits that they've worked for less than minimal wage. And what I want to talk first of all is actually charge your worth and the guilt of just getting over yourself and knowing and I mean that with, I don't mean that get over yourself in a horrible way, but I mean, just getting out of your own way and charging what you are worth because you are worth it. And I think especially when you are a solo therapist and you're mobile or you work like I do from a bedroom, you might start to think that your services should be cheaper than a high street salon or a spa because you're like, no, I just work at the back of my car. I've turned a bedroom into a, into a salon. Um, and it's really not like that. And I, like I said in my last webinar, actually, if you watched it, understanding how you speak about your business, you know, is it just all oh, my little business? Do you take your business seriously, which we will go over a little bit later. But understand, you know, you've started your business to help people, but you are allowed to make an income from helping people. And I feel there is this real kind of push and pull with that like we really want to help people but actually to ask for money and some of you might be going no nope, do you know what I'm quite happy I charge I know my worth and I take what I'm you know what I deserve but I do see a lot of resistance of actually charging your worth and then that will reflect in the prices that you charge um, and the clients that you attract so it's really important that you start to understand actually money is a good thing you are it's not as if you know, you're, you are, it's an exchange. You are giving them something, a treatment, a product. You are making them feel something. And in return for that, their thank you is, yes, they say thank you, but you are getting money in your bank to help you carry on your business because without it, you won't have a business to pay for your establishment or your car or 
your room, whatever it is, um, but to also give you a quality of life that you want and that you deserve. Um, and it's understanding, like I have, how you speak about money. Like I used to say, well, as long as I have enough, just enough to pay my bills. Who wants just enough to just pay their bills? It's boring. I want to experience life. I want to do stuff. And it doesn't make you greedy and it doesn't make you selfish for wanting, wanting those things. And I think it's trying to understand that and have peace with it. And actually getting into the mind of an entrepreneur, because in essence, that is what you are. You've had a business idea, you've turned it around, and now you want to give a service for money in return, a business, an entrepreneur, which is your baby. And I used to, I still do, my business was my baby. Um, and even when I had my son, I was like, I'm giving up my baby. Like my business was my, literally my life. I loved it. Did it I just loved living and breathing it. Um, but you need to look and take a step back um, to actually ask, are you treating your business like a business, like the, an entrepreneur mindset? Or are you treating it more like a hobby? Whereas you're getting a bit of money, you don't even know how much money, this isn't to name and shame. Um, you don't know how much money you bought in the last few months. You don't track your money. You haven't ever worked out your costings. Um, and this isn't to make you feel guilty because you may never have been shown how to do it. Um, you go to college, they teach you how to massage, to do nails, to wax. But, and you might have a bit, if you've done it like a full-time course, they'll have a little bit on marketing and business. But they don't really, I know when I went, I know things might have changed, but they don't really teach you how to make a, a really good, successful business and treat it like a business and not a hobby. So hopefully tonight, or not tonight, this afternoon, this will just make you feel a little bit more in control and it doesn't have to be scary. Um, you don't have to know all these formulas to understand and track your money or how to do your costings. It is just very simply how to keep a business going and to know that A, you're getting the money that you want and deserve. And actually, is it worth your time? Would you be better just going to get a job? And we don't want that, you know? It's, um, and you're gonna have various money goals. Some of you will want to earn thousands and thousands. Some of you just want enough to be able to have some, maybe have some pocket money. I don't know if you have, don't have a lot of outgoings, you may not want or desire as much as somebody else. There's no right and there's no wrong. Everyone's so different. But some money basics. Do you track your money? Um, and I know I can't see the comments, so I would normally sort of say, put in the comments, I want to know, do you track your money? Um, and it's a discipline. If you're not used to doing it, it's like anything, like going to the gym, eating healthy. If you have a bit of a, a thing about money, then tracking it can seem a really almighty task because you think, actually, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. But if you don't face up to what you're bringing in and what you're spending, your business won't be as successful as you want it to be. So do you track your money? Money in versus money out. And that's basically, that is like the, just the basics of money. You need to know this for your business. We're not in Dragon's Den. I don't expect you to recall figures from the last two months and projections, but just having it on a spreadsheet so you can actually analyze and look what months were successful, weren't, what weren't, maybe what you did differently. So you can start to analyze and review Sorry, hay fever is not my friend in a minute. And it's and it's not to be embarrassed if you don't do it. Some of you might be going, well, of course I do it. Some of you might go, oh my gosh, I don't do it at all. Or I don't do it enough or I'm not consistent with it. And it doesn't have to be a huge slog. Have you ever worked out how much profit you make from each treatment? Um, again, if you don't know how much actual profit, because when we say, how much do you want to earn? And someone might go, oh, about 12 grand. Is that profit or is that everything so again you've got to take all these expenses out of that what when you say how much you want to earn are you thinking actually in profit so this is why you need to know how much profit do you need to make to survive um do you set an annual income goal after expenses like i just said um you know if you ever worked for somebody you would have goals i don't know about you but we've had i've had been you know in this in the um oh staff room we've got the word because i haven't had a staff room for so long You've got all your targets, what you need to be hitting, but there's no reason why you cannot do that for yourself. Whether you're mobile and you do it for a day or whether you've got, you're renting a room and you work seven days a week when we open again, have an annual income goal because it gives you something to strive for. And imagine 
what are you going to do with this money? Like get excited about this money that you're going to bring, that you're going to bring into your business. And how are you going to spend it? Not just on the bills and the car and your taxes, but what, what do you actually want to spend your money on? Um, have you worked out how you can hit that goal monthly, weekly, daily, and even hourly? Because then when you come to price up your treatments, are you actually even charging enough to hit that hourly rate? Like how much do you want to, as a rough kind of guide, want to earn per hour? Um, and then you can also see you have your income goal. If we're month one, you kind of go, you know, you've, you've kind of like dillied it out over the 12 months. Your final goal is X amount. You've dillied it over the, the, the 12 months. Month one, you're slightly under. You know, you then need to spread that bit that you're under by over the next remaining 11 months so you keep on going you keep on tracking so you can still hit that target and this isn't about being money hungry like I say and kind of like oh I'm all for the money all for the money but if you aren't making an income you're not going to have a business at the end of and it is a hobby which isn't a bad thing if that's what you want but I'm guessing you're here listening to me because you actually do want a business and you want to make decent money um, so do you know how much money you need to just survive? Have you ever worked out business expenses and even just personal expenses? How much is each each one? How much you have to pay per month? When does it come out of your account? And it's as simple as that. It's just tracking this stuff to know you need this much to, to survive. And then how much money would you like to make to do the fun stuff and experience life? Um, and this is all very much like mindset stuff as well. Knowing what you want to experience in life takes the kind of maybe that ickiness about getting money. Because you're like, I really want to go here. Or I want to do this. It could be totally elaborate. It could be as simple as you like. But it's what do you want to experience? Because a lot of it does take money. Not everything. You can get a lot of joy without money. But money does bring you stuff that you I think there are things that money you need money for. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> get the words out and just like your money beliefs and it's really important because if you want your business to be a success yes you need to know how to do treatments you need all of the the business knowledge the sales the um how to set up a business you need to know all of that but you won't be a success if your mindset is rubbish if you are not there and you're not believing what you say or your money beliefs are you know not great then you're not going to be in that place where you attract money. And, you know, you might believe in law of attraction or you may not. But it's basically if you're head, if you're not in the game, you won't attract money. You won't get the clients that you need within your business. So I want you to start to think like now. And I know it's, it's an extremely tough time at the minute with money. If you're not working, well, we're not working. But know your money story, like actually write it out. What are your beliefs from a child? What do you say regularly when you talk about money? Like, what did your parents say? Your friends, I don't know, your spouse, a partner, whatever. Who around you, how do they speak? And what beliefs did you grow up with? And do you believe them now yourself? But are you still finding that you're saying them? You know, money doesn't grow on trees. It takes, you have to work really hard to make money. People like us don't make money. Um, you know, you see someone drive past in a Ferrari, you instantly think they've done something dodgy to get it. I'm not saying you want a Ferrari, but, you know, it's kind of how do you see others when they've got money or people that haven't got money? How do you speak about money? How do you treat money? Do you treat it with the respect it deserves um, is, a, is another thing. So it's starting to think, again, do you not tra like track your money? You're constantly finding pound notes everywhere. You're like, oh, I didn't know I had that. You're not grateful for your money. Um, or do you think, you know, money always comes to me, love money, I love money so much, I literally could kiss it, don't, obviously, um, but how do you treat it, do you just spend it, the moment you get it, you can't bear to keep it in your bank account, because guess what, you'll just keep on spending, unless you're aware of it, or are you a complete squirreler, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel away, and then you never spend anything, neither are right or wrong, but if you're not feeling aligned at the minute to your business, and your business isn't, hasn't done what it's, what you've wanted it to do then this is when you may need to sort of look at how you treat money and how do you talk about your clients money do you say my clients will never buy that they won't afford that they won't do this they won't do that or do you not even think about it and just think my clients will 
buy whatever I say because they, I know they trust in me. So how do you, are your clients cheap? How do you talk about your clients? This is all really, it's the, it is mindset is actually probably one of the most important things about running a business and getting into that right frame of mind. So that's all I'm going to say there. Um, so avoiding magpie syndrome. I have definitely been there and spent way much more than I should have because, I, again, I wasn't really that aware of what I was spending. Um, so stop just buying and investing, because we are investing, in everything that everyone else is doing. Um, you know, you see all these new treatments are constantly coming out and then you see some people over the road, they're doing this particular treatment. Someone else is doing brows. Someone else is doing this to their brows. You think, my well, business isn't working. I need to invest all this money into learning brows. Although I don't like brows, I don't think my clients really want me to do brows, but I better do it because everyone else is doing it. Just stop. You don't need to. Um, and magpie syndrome, I've been there. Like I say, I'm just like, oh, I need this and I need that. And I haven't I've let my heart rule my head sometimes with that kind of thing. So what, before you like part with lots of money is know your target market, what they need and what they want. So do your research rather than just guessing. I think within business, you are gonna, you have to take risks, it's part and parcel, but you have to kind of take risks um, as calculated as you can there are some you just think you know what I'm going to do it you just get this gut feeling but you've got to be prepared to put the work in to get the money back but do your research as much as you can um, work out how many clients you will need to make the money back like realistically okay and how are you going to get those clients if you're going to start a new treatment then you need to start thinking, how am I actually going to get these clients? Because it's very well, all very well saying, God, I only need like, I don't know what, 10 clients a week. That's easy. But if you've got none and these clients are coming once a month, you still need to like get a lot of clients on your books to have one for have that and many clients, like 40 clients on your books at least to be getting those 10 clients every week. Um, how much will you charge? You need to know your costings, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. How long will it take to see a return on the best investment? So realistically, how long do you think it's going to take to get that money and then actually start to make a profit? Can you afford that? Um, and there are times when I've just taken risks and, you know, and I'm not saying do this. You just go, do you know what? I'm going to make it work. And if you have the belief and you work on the mindset stuff, then, you know, you may be able to do it, but you've got to work on a lot of other stuff as well. Sales, marketing, you've got to learn it all. If you think, actually, I can't afford it, you've got to really be committed to learning loads of stuff. So it does work. Um, and what are you going to do to bring in the custom? Like, what is your strategy? What kind of advertising? What kind of marketing are you going to do to pull people in? Um, and just doing like one Facebook post a week and just going, that's my marketing strategy. I've got this great new... Um, treatment I spent loads of money on it um I've kind of I don't know whether people want it I don't know actually if it's going to work but I've put a post out why aren't people coming and people don't you need to hunt them down people just won't just find you unless they are particularly really looking for it and sometimes that's just luck that they've happened to google you um or had a recommendation so you need to have a real clear strategy on all of these things before you just go spending lots and lots of money out. And I am speaking from experience. <laughs> um, so setting your good money habits. So these are the sort of things that you need to start putting in place within your business. So um, bear with me. So you need to know your profit. Profit, um, how much you charge minus the cost it is to you to carry out the treatment are you actually making enough and you can find out your costings from your suppliers um some things i know like with waxing it is pretty hard to find out your costings ask your suppliers they may very well know um but it's as, as you know anyone that does waxing it's such a it depends on so many different factors but it is things obviously when we go back if it's something that you've never worked out before you can start to roughly guess maybe start to track how much you use out of a wax pot how many you know how much money you make out of a pot of um, 100 spatulas 
and um, wax strips, start to just get a rough estimate. You can, with a bottle of oil, you know how much roughly you use on a body massage. Again, you can divide that by the cost, by the amount in your massage bottle. I'm looking at my massage right now, so I'm looking over there. Um, or ask the suppliers. So you need to know how much each treatment is costing you in money, in product, and how much you are gonna charge and how long that treatment is gonna take you. Um, and th think about it all, because um, we're, we're all talkers, we all love to talk. Our clients, most of them like to talk even more than we do. So again, you need to take that into account, actually how long are you spending on this stuff? And then you've got to think, are you gonna do a discount? Which I don't say you need to do discounts personally, um, only at very sort of special occasions, as in new treatments kind of to promote but that's all going to come out of your profits so it's is it even worth it so just just something to really think about track daily your income your sales and your expenses on a simple spreadsheet um and it all all it needs to be is a simple spreadsheet a table if you're good with excel you don't even need to know formulas you don't need to do anything you just literally your columns that's all you need to put in if you've got an online booking system it will do it for you which is even better um but just track everything, everything that you spend. Don't forget, like write it down, put it on your phone, whatever. Have some kind of simple spreadsheet. You don't need to go and invest in Sage or um, Zero if you're just starting out. You really don't. I mean, it's a great thing to have, um, but you don't feel like you need to have it. Just keep it simple. Keep all your receipts filed monthly. Get a, um, oh, mine's moved, like a, um, an accordion file. Date them, you know, January to February, moment you get one, have a little, I get, I've got a little one in my car. So when I'm out and about, I pop it in the, there in the car, then I come back home, pop it into my computer, file it away and it's done. Because who else, and I have done this, um, especially since my little boy's been born, um, you don't do anything and they just mount piles and piles of receipts, you don't know when they're for. And then come January, when you've literally got 30 odd days to sort it all out, because that's the deadline. And I know you've done it because I have. I can't say I've not. Um, but whereas if you did it every day for a couple of minutes, oh, honestly, it's such a free and feeling. And it doesn't have to be complicated. File them, write the date, the amount, the invoice number, if it's from a, um, a supplier um, and what it's for. So you can actually start to see how much you're spending on stationery, on consumables, on products, on training, on memberships, magazines, whatever, insurance. So you've got a tally of where your money goes. So you can start to work out some kind of budget. If you think, gosh, you know, I spent way too much on stationery. Um, have a separate bank account for your business. Some of your um, personal bank accounts, you um, you may be able to actually use that for a solo, solo trader business. Um, sole trader business sorry just double check with your bank so bank accounts they do charge you that bit more um, but it's really important that you just keep it separate please keep it separate if you haven't let's try to make this your first thing that you do um and they don't you know they don't cost you a lot a lot of money but it just makes it so clearer and cleaner when you are looking through your money you're not spending what you shouldn't really important Put aside money for your end of year tax as well. Um, you can earn £12,000 profit. Let's make sure so I did write that back down. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm sending you right. £12,000 profit before you pay tax. And then after that, it's 20%. What well, if you earn over 50000 then after the 50000 up to 150000 you then have to pay 40% on that bit, not on the whole amount. Um, obviously, if you've got a part-time job, that's going to be slightly different but just get into the habit of just saving 20 percent of all your treatments into a separate pot leave it there and then when you get your tax bill you haven't got to worry about it and again keep a tally are you going to have to be paying tax on your money are you not another reason rather than going oh my god i've got this big tax bill and i've got no money i've got no money because i spend it all because i haven't kept track on it okay um set an annual budget for things like marketing training um, consumables, stationery, because you might go over. And it also makes you more, a bit more selective. Um, I know many of you would have been approached by schools, by different charities. Can you give us a voucher? Can you give us a donation? But actually setting budgets on how much you are going to put into doing vouchers. Because if you say yes to everybody, 
it could be a lot of time that you're you're giving out a month and time is precious time is precious you can't get it back um so set a budget and no business if they ask you can you you know do you want to market here can you give us a voucher you just simply need to say i'm sorry my um i've, I've spent all my marketing budget this year i've got nothing less but ask me ask me again next year there's they're kind of go yeah that's fine don't worry about it just setting those boundaries in place and having a budget um really nice to have a money day once a week not even a money day literally like a money hour half an hour to just see how your week's going like are you on track with your targets what can you improve are you kind of going oh my gosh i'm not earning enough or i need to earn more how much all my expenses because then you can check against your um bank accounts you then don't forget because I don't know, you know, if something might come out of your bank account two months ago, you go to sort out your cost and you think, oh, I have no idea. What was that even for? And then you spend time trying to track what that was even for. Because if you do it that week, it's fresh in your mind. It's just easy. Doesn't have to be scary. Um, and if you get to a point where you are making enough money, invest in an accountant. It's the best thing, honestly. Um, I, I think if you do a lot of the, and they'll, they'll all charge different amounts, it depends. If you get quite a lot of this done for them, right? if you get your receipts done, you've got it all tracked out, it will be cheaper. And you're sort of thinking, well, what's the point of me having one then? Um, but they will look for things, um, you know, your assets, which I wouldn't have a clue. They'll also help you out with um, how much allowance to use if you work from home, you know, your internet, um, your laundry, your electricity, they kind of like work it all out for you. If you love numbers and you can sort all that out, then please, you know, go for it. You might not need one. But if you sort of think, actually, I could really do with that bit of help to help save you money, get an accountant. That would be my, let it that be your kind of goal when you're six, you know, you're making enough money, get an accountant or save money each week and pay. I think mine was about, uh, about 300 pounds, I think. So the lingo, um, you've got net profit, which, and it's, Again, I'm not an accountant, I'm not a financial expert, but just words to be aware of. Um, you've got your net profit, which is your total amount bought in after all taxes and expenses. And then you've got your gross profit, which is your total amount bought into your business after the cost in product of the service, okay? So however much it costs in creams and lotions and potions, that's your gross prof profit, whereas your net, is after everything. And by that, I mean your internet, your website costs, your marketing costs, everything other, because that's all gonna come out of that one facial, that one now treatment, all of these extra things, not just the creams and the oils, is everything comes out of that amount. This is why it's, and your PPE now, this is why it's really important. And now's a good time to start to look at your prices. Um, costs to consider. Um, so you've got, insurance again screenshot this if you if you wish these are just things that you may not have thought about obviously if you've been doing this for years you may very well have um obviously you've got your insurance you've got your national insurance which i have written this out actually so i get this right um so it's for profits at least 6300 you would pay um national insurance which i think it works out about three pound ten a week at the minute obviously it's always differs and that's for your national insurance um, but if you um make in profit more than eight thousand eight and a half thousand give or take you then also have to pay class four national insurance as well so for instance if this was going from 2019 if you were to make twelve thousand pounds profit and you had to pay class two and class four you're looking at about 459 pounds for the year so again quite a big big chunk um and if you go on which.co.uk there is actually like an income calculator actually which is quite useful but it's just something to think about i don't want you kind of going oh my gosh what is it what is it this week what is it this week but it's all costs all costs get in touch with an accountant and they can help you okay um got to obviously pay your tax which i said about earlier so anything under twelve thousand, you don't actually have to pay tax for unless you've got a part-time job Again, you'd need advice on that. Um, VAT, you don't need, you need to be, well, you need to be earning over 85,000 before you add VAT on top. You've got things like your website, your domain name, which is a yearly um, subscription. If you've got www.therevivecompany, um, I'll use one and one, but there's loads out there. Um, that, I, that costs me every year. 
um, if you're going to host a website, I use Vistaprint, that costs me £10 or something a month. Um, you've got any marketing materials, any advertising, um, any like price lists as well. Your retail range, which I suggest you do have a retail range. Any stationery, now your PPE, consumables, price lists, the printing of all this stuff. Um, your supplier costs, a card machine cost, an accountant, branding. If I like, if I was kind of thinking my business isn't working right now, let me go and invest in another treatment, or would I buy an accountant? I'd probably get look at getting an accountant rather than learning another treatment. That's kind of what I would think personally, um, to try and get me some help. Um, you've got to think about costs of branding, creating logos, um, your internet your mobile phone, your online booking system, you've got the laundry, you've got the electric, you might have council costs. Um, so if you work from home, you must get in touch with the council to see whether you have to pay like any kind of business rates as well. Not necessarily, I don't. Um, your room has to be a certain size and you have to see you know, what treatment you're doing. So get in touch with the council, training, memberships, and now even waste disposal. Again, get in touch with your local council depends on what treatments that you do. And that's just a list that I can think of at the top of my head. Well, not, I mean, I just spend time writing this down on the things to consider that all of this has got to come out of your treatments, not to just the lotions and potions. It's all of these little bits that will add up out of all of your treatments. OK, and I can't just say, oh, it's this much or it's this much because everything's so different. Um, it's really variable. So it's having a, an idea on how much this stuff costs you. Um, <clears throat> so don't undersell yourself and learn how to do business. Rather than, um, again, spending time, like lots of money on treatments all of the time, invest in learning how to sell, how to market, how to use social media, your confidence even. If you're struggling with your confidence and getting yourself out there, money well spent, I know everyone's gonna be different, is working on how to get rid of all the stuff that's going internally on to succeed. Um, so learn how to do business, master your mind, but don't undersell yourself. Like you do a lot, you've got a lot of knowledge. So it's like I say, knowing your costings, set your targets, knowing how much you want to earn in order to not just survive, because who wants, what's the point in having a business if it's just all to survive? Um, that just sounds like a struggle, an uphill struggle. Um, think like a business if you do not want this to be a hobby. Stop investing in treatment, start learning and investing in learning, I'm oh, sorry, start investing in learning business skills. And don't think because you are a one woman or a man band that you cannot charge your worth because what you are doing is really bespoke. You aren't in you know, a salon environment with lots and lots of people. You are on your, on your own and creating a really bespoke environment for that one person at a time and stop discounting. Don't go into panic mode, discounting all the time because it's gonna come off of all of that, all of your profits. Um, so I hope this has helped so far. Um, I just wanted to check in um, time. Um, so setting up your business. So for those that are thinking about becoming um, a therapist, like a, a mobile or at home therapist from working in a salon, or for those that are moving from a salon environment to a home environment, you know, you're kind of going down to just you, yourself and I, um, just some things Obviously, they're so different in, and I could talk about each of these things for literally all day. But in a nutshell, what you need to be thinking about to setting up your business is obviously giving yourself a name, but making sure that it's not like trademarked anywhere is one thing because you don't want that happening. Um, also, even if you may not want a website right now, look at domain names because that could sway you. It might not. You might think, no, I want to call my name, my business that. But if you can't get the website for your the website name for your business and then for your email address, it might sway you. Um, you must register your business with HR, oh, HRMC, can never say it right. Um, must do that. Um, check with your council regards any business rates, if you need planning permission, if you're going to put something up in the garden, and also your waste disposal. Do they have particular um, guidelines that you need to follow. Every council is so different. Some might want to come over to your premises, some might not. 
some mine, um, I need to get back in touch with them now, everything's changed. But before they were just like, um, yeah, don't worry about it, carry on. Like they, they weren't worried. <laughs> um, you need to check with your mortgage provider that you can work from home if you're working from home. A landlord, can you actually run a business if you're renting? And does your home insurance cover you? Um, some people, if they've got a place in the garden, will just have that under business insurance and not with the home insurance. Um, but you need to just double check that that's okay. Um, you need to, if you've got a website, register your business with Google Business. It's completely free. And if you wanna get up there on Google search, then you need to register your website and you need to register your business. That way people can leave reviews for you. You can have that nice little pretty picture in the corner with your map, if you want a map, times and all that bit. You need to register with Google Biz. You will register. And then if you think, well, I have, if you haven't been sent a PIN number, which you then input, you haven't registered with Google Business. OK, so you, just to be aware. Um, know your target market where market where they hang out so you can target your marketing blanket marketing putting leaflets through thousands and thousands of doors may not attract that key person that you actually want to treat and want your business full of um, you could spend a lot of money dillying them around to every street in your neighborhood but half the houses are full of people that have got no interest in what you do so that's a waste of time and money if you're going to leaflet deliver you're looking at a one to two percent return on that I mean, it's better than nothing but there are other ways but knowing your target market you know where they're going to hang out and that's where you want to target your services um check out your car insurance um have a really strong brand as in the colors are all consistent the fonts consistent um, on your Instagram and face, Facebook even, the same filters. So it's got a clear professional image. Um, and really good one for this is Canva. Completely, uh, it is free, but you can have the paid version for £12, which is what I use. Um, and I created all of this in Canva. It's brilliant. It's a really good platform. Um, source the best price products that reflect your business. So if you are a no frills, then you're not going to want to be spending money on the best, best, best. If you are offering premium, then you wanna look around for the best price products for wholesalers. Um, and there's so many out there, but do again, look, look and track it, the prices of all of this stuff, because you can find it cheaper, um, maybe somewhere else, but is the quality affected? Um, have, a, have a think. Um, set your prices, look by all means at your competitors, but don't judge your whole business model on someone else's prices. Like when I first started, I literally, I think I looked at the high street salon that I wanted to be like, and I knocked a couple of quid off because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, I was like, yeah, about that, about that, that will do. That looks about right, a bit cheaper. Um, but how do I know if she's got money issues? She might have such bad money worth that she's not charging enough. I don't know what her overheads are. Um, I don't know what her costs are. I don't know nothing. So it's really start to set your prices around your own particular circumstances and how much you want to make and who your ideal client is. If you want to attract, you know, a certain type of person in your business, then that will have an impact on your prices as well. Um, but it's got to be worth your while. Um, and invest in some form of retail. Retail, really important um, for continuing the experience of your customer's journey. So they're not going home and using all the wrong products to undo what you've done. And it creates, you know, it's not all about, yes, you're gonna earn more money, which is great, which is what you wanna do, but you're doing a real disservice if you're not telling people, right, you've got this problem, here's what I suggest, and I've got it for you right here, there you go. If you're mobile, don't have lots sitting on your shelf because it's money just sitting there, but you can, you know, go for a few key items to start with. And then once you've sold them, plow the money back into your business to buy more. Simple as that. Don't feel like the magpie syndrome and get one of everything that you don't even know what people want. And it just sits there and some of it goes off because that's a waste. <laughs> or you use it yourself just to use it up. You can tell voice of experience. <laughs> um, so, and thinking about creating the experience for your clients, like, what is your ethos of your business? Like, what is your personality of your business? Excuse me. And what kind of customer journey do you want them to have? 
not just, you know, from anything from where they first find you. So once they've gone home and left you and in a few days, do you get in touch with them to see how they are? You need to have a clear customer journey and the experience that you want your clients to have. Make sure that you've got your terms and conditions. Now's a great time to sort that out. What are your terms and conditions within your business? Your refunds, if you um, have products, just all of your terms and conditions. Create a cancellation policy. Um, some people now is a little bit, you have a little bit more leeway with what's going on in the world. Um, but it's important that you have something there in place for the people that are time wasters, that keep on doing it, that keep on canceling two, one hour before you're meant to see them you need some kind of policy in place to deter that kind of behavior. Because if people would keep doing it to you, unfortunately you are the ones that are allowing them to keep on doing it and that's become their normal. So stop it. Um, set boundaries. What are you willing to work? What are your hours? What, um, when will you not take um, business calls and messages? Like have boundaries, stick to them. And how long do you want people in chatting and have clear boundaries and have it all written down in your own little handbook even learn how to sell um, and like I said earlier it is a disservice not to recommend, pro recommend products that will solve clients problems like many a time I've gone to a, a salon I've had money in my pocket going right I'm going to buy off you she didn't recommend anything she just went oh here's some samples even though I don't think she even used them on me and so I bought it online because I didn't want to spend my money with her because she didn't give me any she didn't she didn't like nurture me or tell me what I needed and I would have bought, I have money sitting there to actually, I would have bought anything she told me to, but she didn't do it, so I didn't buy. Um, so never assume people won't buy. It's your assumption that you are putting onto others, okay? So again, this is kind of understanding what you're thinking about people. Um, and then just lastly, it doesn't matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. So you've got all of these ideas, you're kind of finding your feet maybe, I've given all this stuff about how to manage your money, manage your money, and you're thinking, oh gosh, this is all so much. Or it, the main thing is just every day, doing a little bit, doing a little bit. And it's no race, it's no competition, only you make the competition in your own mind with other people. Stop comparing to what other people are doing and enjoy the process of running your business and the process of, of it bringing money in, like have celebrations, like celebrate when you've earned a certain amount or you've got new clients or you've sold something. It's really important that you really celebrate. And I don't mean just go, oh yeah, great for me. Take yourself out on a date when we can go out, obviously. Uh, might just be a walk around the park at the minute. And, you know, but really enjoy the experience. It's, it, you know, you're, it's not a race. It really isn't. Um, so I hope that has given you some food for thought um and if you would like to connect with me further i do have a, a, a facebook group um i've been off all social media this week so if you have tried to join this week i've literally deleted it all from my phone but i'm back on um so it's the revive co pro facebook group um i'm also on instagram um and if you did want to know more about the affluent solar therapist club it's basically a membership club um monthly membership where we i teach you all about news like creating email marketing mindset absolutely everything each month we have various um amount of experts in and it's just training to help you all have affluent businesses because that's my main name really um so yeah thank you for joining me um so i hope that was okay eve and everybody yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic thank you Kerry. <laughs> that was that was really interesting um, and we've had lots of comments and questions as you've been going along so we'll definitely get those answered in a sec and um, i think it's just fascinating i think attitude to money is so important and it's about as you say confidence and mindset isn't it and i think that's what a lot of people in our industry unfortunately do struggle with is just charging their worth and i think that's a it's a really great starting point so thank you that was really really interesting and so yeah we've had lots of questions so we'll get get straight on to those if that's okay sorry i've missed that can you see me okay i didn't know i haven't stopped sharing my screen oh yeah actually if you stop sharing your screen then people will be able to see us both a little bit bigger that's a good point <laughs> is that better um i'm still seeing your screen if you stop sharing it from that little green button at the bottom Oh, hang on, I might be able to share. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm having a moment. Oh, gosh, I can't share it. I'll share it. Oh, I'll stop share. There we yeah. go. Sorry. <laughs> <We're back. laughs> 
Sorry. <laughs> Excellent. So now everyone can see our faces on that topic. <laughs> Great. So yeah, we've had quite a few questions through already. So I will, and um, I'll make a start if that's okay. And um, one question we've had here in Zoom is: Would you recommend that we use just one bank account for all income and outgoing, or do you recommend having several um, to separate money for certain things, for example, product purchases in one account and rent and tax in another, etc.? I would have maybe a separate one that you can put your taxes in, so you don't spend it. Um, just like a, you know, like a lot of your bank accounts now, you can just set up a small just savings account can't you without any hardly much interest nowadays anyway so keep your tax separate um but regards everything else i for me personally i just keep it all coming in in and out of one account to keep it to track easily um you've got to kind of see what works for you but just keep your taxes separate that's the main thing so you don't you're not tempted to spend them <laughs> yeah to make sure they're definitely there when you have to pay them <laughs> fantastic and um, another question we've had is um from someone who says i'm planning on setting up from home initially but i'm worried about how to compete with some salons that have treat well and group on deals all the time so yeah i suppose that's it's a common problem isn't it how do you compete when other people are discounting if you're trying not to not to okay so first of all you aren't them and unless you want to attract group on clients then you don't need to worry about it you need to sort of just stay in your own lane um and it's very easy to stop going oh, they're doing this they're doing that but one instead of the the what oh sorry again the only time i would say to really think about discounting is if you're just opening up to start to entice people in that's okay um and these are just this is just advice i'm not saying don't ever do it if you're launching a new product range new treatment ranges then you may want to offer discounts to get people in or if you're building up you're going to offer maybe just new clients an incentive to book in that's that's all good it's when you the problem i have i'm not saying don't do it but if you keep on discounting People get used to it and people will then just wait for you to discount and be like, well, I'm not going to come with you because you're always discounting massages in a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And we don't want that kind of um, culture within your business. So it's a case of being like just thinking outside the box and how you can serve people um, more without having to like spend money. So it's kind of like added value, if you like. So it's actually seeing how even simple things like seeing how clients are after their treatment um, as a like a consultation, a catch up with any products that they've bought to kind of that lead on with that experience. Um, are there any online products that you could start to create like ebooks, workbooks, anything like online courses? It can be completely free to do this stuff to then add that added value. Can you introduce maybe like a short depends what you do, but if you were to do now, for instance, could you do a head massage while the nails are, you know, in the curing thing or I don't know, in the heated mitts? Just to think any added extras that you can add that won't cost you more time or a lot more money. Um, but just keep in your own name. Don't, it's not about competing. You will find your own journey and being really clear on the sort of client that you want within your business is invaluable. Absolutely. That makes complete sense. I think that's the thing. If you're competing on price, you're, you're never going to win only because someone's always going to be cheaper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Another question we've had is what would you do when some friends are clients and they pay much less because at the beginning you gave them a discount? That's a difficult thing, I suppose, that everyone faces. You're going to treat some friends. How do you manage that? Yeah, like the mate rates. Um, <laughs> luckily, I don't do any of my friends. <laughs> So I'm, I'm kind of lucky there. Um, if you're not feeling aligned to it anymore and these people, your friends are taking time away from full playing clients, I think true friends would totally understand. If you was to say, look, I've got Mary booked in. She's going to be X amount of money. I can't actually afford to do you right now. You can Maybe you could just have your friends in for like last minute cancellations if you get to that point. But you can't have your business full of discounted friends because they wouldn't do it you know for their jobs mm. it's just explaining that to them um and maybe start saying actually i can't afford to do you at a discount anymore you're gonna have to pay full price or go elsewhere which is a easier said than done um, or limit it limit it to particular days not your peak times if they want you they're gonna have to work around you if you still want to serve them I sure think. And if they're proper friends they'll understand <laughs> yeah i think it's that really awkward conversation but if you're turning away good money just to keep your friend happy and it pays your bills and puts dinner on your table, I'm sure they wouldn't do the same. Yeah. 
And another question that has popped up is, should we charge extra for PPE to our clients when we go back? Now, I know people are quite divided on this as to whether they're going to ask people to bring their own PPE if needed or, or, or charge for it. What are your thoughts? Well, I think if it's coming out of your, you need to look at your prices in the first place um, because it is going to cost you money for every client. It's going to cost you so much more money. And without, you know, what we really need what do we need how much is it going to cost per person so it's kind of at your discretion i know that sounds really it's like a cop out um but if you sort of think by the time what i'm charging now i've got to add this ppp and you aren't happy or feeling aligned or you start to feel resentful with how much money you're earning then you know you need to tweak it and increase it work out actually how much it, how much it's going to cost you and then just sort of take it from there really you might not want to say add on the full amount this is your business and I think people get very opinionated and go you should do this and you should do that if you don't want to you don't have to but remember it's going to come out of your profits so if you're happy for that and it's not going to impact your life then so be it I just think there's too much don't do this you should you should mm. you've got to feel uh, you've got to feel aligned to your decision it's your business no one else is um I get quite passionate about this um, <laughs> so yeah just You've got to add it all up, though, because if you're now finding you're at a loss and you can't afford to do what you need to do, then you need to you do need to put those charges on your treatments. Definitely. If that's yeah, right. absolutely. And it comes down to personal choice, doesn't it? Absolutely. Someone else has commented, actually, I'm fearful of upsetting clients when raising prices. I know, not technically not a question, but do you have any advice around that? I suppose that's the tricky thing. People are worried that they're going to lose clients or people are going to complain. Yeah. And do you know what? They don't. They don't. If they do, then you you're just given you've got space then to have extra people um that do will happily pay it but when you think when you go to Sainsbury's do they tell you I'm going to put the price up of, my, of your yogurt this week you, don't. you just go you buy you think oh, it's gone up by 50p well, probably not even that much and you just accept it um you wouldn't probably I mean when you're doing a price increase I wouldn't say like add 20 quid onto a you know onto a manicure all of a sudden it might want to be an incremental upgrade um but don't be scared, like give them plenty of notice, tell them this is what's going to happen, because if you're not earning enough, then you can't treat them. Costs go up. Um, and I've never had anyone, I've had one person, I think once say, oh, you didn't, you didn't tell us. And I'd literally put it everywhere. But you can't, you've got to, you know, try your best. She had a bit of a moan, but she still came. And I was like, well, I've trained, I've changed products. It costs me more. You know, I explained mm -hmm. she didn't want to come. She didn't want to come. But you will find other people that are happy to pay the price. So don't let that be the, the factor. Just let them know well in advance. Fab, thank you. And another question we've had is how should you determine how much to pay yourself after making profits? So I suppose, again, this is a personal choice in how much you take out of the business, but what would you have any advice around that? Yeah, it is, it is kind of really like what, because we're all going to have different levels of how we want to live life. So there is a, it is a personal choice. But do you want, what kind of level standard of living do you want? Do you want to be going on lots of holidays or actually you're quite happy, simple life, staying at home and not spending? You're not a spender. You don't need materialistic things. You don't want to go out to Michelin restaurants. Um, so it's totally, it is completely up to you. But if you want this higher level life of going on holiday and buying xyz cars and experiences not even materialistic really um you're gonna have to be looking at how much you want to earn within your business um and again there's no right there's no wrong but it's having that in, again an internal look of actually what do you want to experience mm. in life um what do you really want to do and there's no reason why you can't get that from your business um it's just and it's not being self thinking, well, I've got to charge X amount now just so I can go to St. Lucia. But it's kind of just thinking about what is it that you want to do and how can you increase your revenue within your business? So you get, you know, you, you don't want to live maybe a certain way just so you keep all your clients happy. They're not spending enough money. It's, it's your life. And that's the joy of having being a solar therapist, really. Mm. Yeah, so I guess it makes complete sense working out how much you want or need to earn and then kind of working back from there in a way, isn't it? Sort of yeah, how much you need to take out the business. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Fantastic. And um, another person has asked, how do you go about working out hourly expenses? So I suppose perhaps if you're looking at pricing up a treatment and you need to divide it right down into your actual hourly costs. So you would. Um, 
So to work at an hourly rate, what per treatment? Um, I, I would think so. It's just um, the question is just how can we work out our hourly expenses? Oh, OK. Hourly. So you would uh, really just work out how much the, the treatment costs you in product per per treatment. And then you can even down you can even I go myself down to per minute. So I know I don't want to earn like less than really like 90p a minute. Um, and that's just my personal preference. And you would just literally take all the product costs and then find out how much that is per hour that that's going to cost you and when you want to find out how much you want to make per per year for instance you can then divide that per say you want to earn like i don't know twelve thousand pounds divide that down by per month and then by how many days you're going to be working maybe it's five days a week and then you can do that by then how many hours you're going to be working so you can kind of you just backtrack it does that make sense from like 12 months to, to the week, to the hour, and how many hours you're actually going to be working mm. to work out how much you're earning per hour. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's it. It's just calculating it, isn't it? And dividing yeah, it. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think <laughs> that's something I have to write down. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. And one other question we've had is, do you have a sample of a spreadsheet for tracking money? Or perhaps do you know where people can go to find one? Yeah, I mean, Google will have will have them definitely um but it's something that i can i can sort of send send out if anyone wants to just message me um i can you send kind of something similar to what i use um but it doesn't have to be that involved at all but yeah by all means message me um on facebook on the messenger thing kerry bebis and i can send you that by no by all means or look actually if you, if you join the facebook group i can put a document in there and then that you can have it there. <laughs> that might be <laughs> perfect. Thank you so much. And um, that's probably about all we've got time for, Kerry. But um, yeah, as I say, loads of uh, lovely comments saying this has been really informative and useful. Oh, oh bless you. Thank you. I thank you. I think there's lots of people out there. I think particularly when you work on your own or you're trying to get started on your own, it can be quite difficult to know where to go for advice. So it's really, really good to have had you with us and, uh, and speaking from experience. So thank you. Brilliant. Oh, well, thank you. I hope I've helped at least one person. So <laughs> yeah, I think you've helped lots. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. And if you want to check out what other webinars we've got coming up, go over to professionalbeauty.co.uk forward slash webinars because we've got lots more this week. Um, so yeah, join us again soon. Thanks everybody and thanks Kerry. You're more than welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.